Welcome to Chevy Hometown Kids. I'm your host, Emily Reppert. Join me each week as I travel all around the Southwest to find hometown kids who shine in their communities. From exploring youth sports to the great outdoors, I'm all about discovering new talent, trying new things, and having fun along the way. On today's show, we're headed to a volleyball tournament as big as Texas, testing out rugby for the first time, meeting a baseball team hoping to end their first season on top, and coming up next, we're setting sail. Our hometown kids are starring in the stories, so stay tuned as the action gets started. to do this today? Because we're going to be racing and I hope that we win. Well, it's fun and Saturday I don't really have anything else to do, so why not? I thought it was just a fun opportunity to do and get out the house and just race a boat. The River Legacy Foundation has been keeping this event afloat for the past 25 years as one of their main fundraisers. Not only is it a great fundraiser for us, but it's also a great community event that draws students from schools, families, um, organizations, churches that come out and use it as a great team building and learning experience. We have a youth class, which is um, ages 8 to 14, and then we have adults, which is 14 and up, and then we have different boat sizes. So you can have a guppy boat, and that's going to be one to two people. A dolphin is going to be three to five, and then we have our whale category, which can have as many as 10 people in the boat. The kids learn how to build a boat out of cardboard and they paint it polyurethane so it doesn't sink in the water and just disintegrate. They work very hard on the boats and they're so excited. <laughs> Amateur boat builders from all over the state of Texas paddled over to Hurricane Harbor to show off their cardboard creation. No, we were just thinking of minions. This is only two, the two of us. So we were just thinking that we can come up with the minions and just create something. We had really good ideas and we decided to have like a Mustang head in the front and to use all the materials as possible and stuff like that. Well I think it's sleek and thin so I think it's going to go pretty fast. I mean depending on how we roll it. So pretty good feeling about it. It is always amazing to me the boats that I see out here and every year I'm blown away by the creativity of people with the, with the cardboard. I just can't imagine how they come up with such a great idea and concept and then turned it and used it out of cardboard. But learning to keep their boats afloat started months before race day. You've got to work really hard to build the boat and it's, and you can't play around while you're building it or you might mess something up and it took us concentration and hard work to do it. The teachers on math, science, measurements, uh, they have to know how much they weigh, they have to know uh, how to float, measure all that, so they don't just sink. Uh, well, we have to measure everything out. We have to make sure you have the correct notes so it just go directly underneath the water, so it stays buoyant and it goes straight. Today, there are nearly 200 fearless leaders ready to brave the waves and lead their team to victory. Uh, so it teaches them how to row so that they can work together um, so that they know what to do when they get out in the water. Um, we need to start rowing and concentrating. We have to practice because last year we would always like crash into walls and um, we would start going the wrong way and going backwards. So we had to practice more this year. I think it might be if we work as a team or something that we might be, we might be able to make it through the water. I um, mean, I have to steer everyone else in the right direction, make sure I don't let them down and Lead on. The River 
Summer Legacy Foundation has other outdoor events each year, like their clay shooting tournament, which is coming up in June. And when we get back, we're meeting a volleyball team fighting their way to the top. Chevy Hometown Kids is brought to you by Chevrolet and their award-winning cars, trucks, and crossovers. Chevrolet, find new roads. and I'd like to give a shout out to my team FC Dallas. They say everything's bigger in Texas and this volleyball tournament is proof of it. There are over 1,600 teams here from across the country all vying for a spot at Nationals. We have been working really hard and we're here to qualify for JOs and it's really exciting and this is the biggest tournament that we have and it's one of our last ones to qualify and it's really excited so we're ready and pumped. The pressure is on for the Austin Junior 17 Navy team as they get set for their first game at the Lone Star Classic. This is the biggest tournament of the year and we almost two weeks ago qualified in Spokane, Washington but we didn't but we were very very close and so this is the next time to qualify and if we want to it's most likely going to be this weekend and we want to go to JO's Junior Olympics in, I think it's in Minneapolis this year. So the team is more determined than ever to bounce back and clinch a spot at Nationals. Well, I don't think they want to leave here the way that they left Spokane with that feeling of, you know, we almost had it. So I feel like, you know, they're, they're pretty bound and determined. So they know what they need to do. So it's just a matter of executing that. And even though they're coming in on the strong side of this event, they're ready to fight harder than they ever have before. Like our team, 17 Navy, we started off as a second team in the tournament. So we started off pretty high because of our tournament in Spokane where we played, we got fifth. So how does it feel to already come in here kind of on a high note? I mean, it's good, but then that means we just need to buckle down and like keep our spot because it's real easy to get comfortable sometimes. You can't come in too confident because you don't want to like over, get overconfident and then like not try and then lose to an easy team and then it screws up your, your whole tournament. So this Austin, Texas team has been in attack mode, preparing for the big weekend ahead of them. We practice so hard. We practice three days a week and we go to special training afterwards and we just have fun together. We really do team bonding at the beginning of everything and we just all have one goal in mind and we know what we're doing. So It's a really big dedication. We practice three times a week, three hours each. We spend most of our weekends in convention centers. So like Easter this weekend we're here and it's just it's a lot of work here and in school keeping up with school. But the gratification that comes along with making it this far is well worth the work. Uh, this is the uh, largest girls national qualifier for junior volleyball in the country actually. Uh, we're running about 116 courts this weekend and last weekend we ran under 19 courts. We're hosting about 1600 teams and everybody's trying to make it to Junior Olympics. This is not only just a huge qualifier, it's actually the most competitive. Last year we had like 18% of our teams finish in the top three at Junior Olympics, so it gives all these teams the opportunity to come and play top quality competition consistently, and it's just so fun and it's, a, it's an experience. It's really helpful just to see that so many different competitions, like some people are good, some people are not so good, and just test your limits on what to do, and it's just really cool to just be here and see all these teams playing, it's just really cool. And so far, this team is digging their way to the top. We did really good. We started off really strong, and hopefully we'll finish and win out throughout the day, and I'm really excited for it. It was really good. We beat them really well, and so it's a great way to start the tournament. With the bar set high, they're one step closer to reaching their goal. So how would it feel for all your hard work to pay off this weekend and to qualify? Oh, it would feel amazing. I've never been to JOs, so it's going to be really exciting. So if we make it, that would be so cool. It would be amazing, it'd be my first time to have qualified and it's a really, really big deal and only a certain amount of teams get to qualify and it'd, it'd be the best feeling ever. Win or lose, the Lone Star Classic was a great experience for players and a jump start for those who want to play in college. And when we get back, it's Know and Grow, where pros give us tips to make our game better. This week, we're getting a baseball lesson. Know a kid in your hometown that deserves to be on the show? Share their story on our website, hometownkids.tv, or tell us on Facebook.
Brought to you in part by Golden Chick, the original and still the best. Now it's time to take a look at this week's Everyday Hero. Each episode will spotlight a crusader who's making a big impact in their community. This week's Everyday Hero is Coach Gabe from San Angelo. He's the assistant track and cross country coach at Angelo State University and a former collegiate athlete. Coach Gabe has been donating his time to young runners ever since he graduated, making him this week's Everyday Hero. Tune in each week as we highlight an everyday hero whose efforts deserve recognition. So if you know someone in your community who deserves to be recognized for their service, email us your nomination to heroes at hometownkids.tv. For today's Know and Grow, I'm with Coach Ashby from Coram Deo Academy. Tell me a little bit about what you do there. I'm the head baseball coach and also the associate athletic director. Today you're going to teach us a little bit about baseball. What are you going to show us? Uh, today we're going to learn about how to throw a, a runner out at second base. A uh, catcher has to be very quick, fast, and uh, deliver the right ball down to the second baseman. All right, let's get started. All right, here we go. The next thing we're going to do talking about in catching is throwing down a second. When we got a runner leading off on first and he's ready to steal, we want to make a good throw down to second. Our catcher has to be in the proper position when he makes a delivery down to second base. Once that pitch is delivered, our catcher's first thing he's going to do is he's going to pop up. When he pops up, he wants to stay as low to the ground as possible. Then he wants to shift his feet around, and then we got a little line that we want to make sure that we're lined up to second base, okay? Both feet are on that line. It's an imaginary line. You can draw one in the sand, okay, in the dirt there. And as you get ready, he's, notice how he stays low. He's not standing up tall, but he's staying up low. All right, so he pops up, rotates his feet around, gets squared up, mind the second, and then he follows through, all right? So the three things to learn on that is stay low when you pop up and get lined up and then follow through. So let's review that one more time. We're gonna do it slow again, okay? So here we go, pitch comes in, pop up, stay low, rotate your feet, line up, and follow through, okay? So that's how it should look. tip again? Head over to our website hometownkids.tv to replay this lesson and to watch other know and grows. But now we're learning about a sport that's starting to take off in Texas, rugby. Today we're learning about a popular sport from across the pond. It's called rugby and it originated in England, but it's starting to make its mark in North Texas. The word is spreading fast. Honestly, my friend, he had his own friend who was playing rugby. My friend told me, and one day I came out to practice, and I got, I got involved, and I just fell in love with the first day. Um, I recently signed up with the ladies' team, and I just wanted to get more of my family involved in this. We, we love rugby, and we're just excited to have Madison come out and play. I uh, actually have a friend of mine uh, is on the, on the professional team. So uh, he invited us out a couple weeks ago, and my grandson fell in love with it. So I had to find out what it was about this sport that has people falling in love at first sight. The camaraderie, really. A lot of my guys, a lot of guys play football here. The first thing they notice is camaraderie. The players really do look out for each other. And when you play, you have somebody. When we say with you, they really are with you, and they will protect you. And your guy, your team is really your family. It's the camaraderie, the team, the the team environment. It's just it's fun. It's upbeat, motivating, exciting. I mean, always something going on. Just a fast-paced sport. But one thing this sport isn't to be confused with is football. How would you describe this sport to someone that doesn't know anything about it? Um, it's, it's difficult because the first thing you always hear is football without pads, which is um, very inaccurate. Um, rugby is a game of space. It's a game of uh, 15 players on each team on a uh, pitch field the same size as, as a soccer field. So there's a lot of open space. Uh, yes, it's a contact sport, uh, but the emphasis is on finding space, uh, movement of the ball around the pitch. Um, but fundamentally, it's, a, it's a, a territory game. It's we need to cross the ball over the opposition goal line, just like football. Uh, football came from rugby, so there are a lot of similarities. 
but in the, the type of athlete that we look for, uh, the way the game is managed on and off the field is very, very different from football. So uh, appeals to a very different athlete, very different fan. And six years ago, rugby enthusiast Phil started Griffin's Rugby Club to grow this sport in North Texas. Uh, Griffin's Rugby is a club I started back in 2008. Um, so we've got everything from Division One men's uh, down to the, the younger kids that you see behind us, all the way down to eight year old. Uh, so it's a rugby club for pretty much all levels, all ages of, uh, of player. What is so great about this sport? What made you want to, you know, share it with other people and to grow it in this area? It's, it's somewhat of a unique sport in, in that regard in that the families are involved in it. I mean, you got everything from the corporate sponsorship side, like you do in professional sport all over the world. Um, but it's one of those sports you can start playing at eight years old. And my dad, for example, stopped playing at 53 years old. Um, so America's still a little bit behind on, on the depth of sport. Uh, so the depth of teams that you have, um, but that's what we're trying to change here and get more families, more people out playing the sport. And weekly intro to rugby clinics are proving this sport really does have something for everyone. Well, rugby is a really great sport. It involves all kinds of people, all shapes and sizes. It really is a fully on team sport. So if you, if you play it, you really will get involved. He likes it because he gets to be involved in everything. It's not in baseball, he gets to stand out in the outfield and just stand there. Uh, in football, he doesn't ever get to touch the ball. Uh, here he gets to touch the ball, he gets to run around, and he just has a good time. This is an em it's emphasizing just introduction to the game. So we, we want to get it going where it's like every other sports program. Every week, uh, twice a week perhaps, kids are coming out and playing rugby. Um, it's back as an Olympic sport for 2016, so that opens up a new market for us. So our opportunity here is just say, hey, come down, try it out. Parents, stick around and watch and learn about it, learn the basic rules of the game. Um, but basically just get a ball in the hand and run around with it and, and learn a little bit about the, the basics of rugby and see if you enjoy it. To find out more about the sport rugby and how you can get involved, visit their website, griffinsrugby.com. And when we get back, it's Chevy in the community. So we're meeting up with a baseball team getting a little help from a North Texas Chevy dealer. Check out ChevyHometownKids.tv for a chance to co-host an episode of the show with me. It's your golden opportunity. Chevy Hometown Kids is brought to you by Chevrolet and their award-winning cars, trucks, and crossovers. Chevrolet, find new roads. With so much to do and see throughout the state, I only get to cover some of the great things happening in hometowns near you. But here are some activities you can go and explore yourself this week. May 16th is the start of Main Street Days in downtown Grapevine. Strawberry Festival is in full swing on the 16th at the Pasadena Fairgrounds. May 17th is the St. Jude's Trail Ride in downtown Dale Hart. And the Mighty Texas Dog Walk in Austin is also on the 17th. Celebrate with the Dewberry Festival on the 17th in Cameron. Or get creative at the Chalk This Way Festival in downtown Louisville. Jefferson Train Days roll into town on the 17th at the Historic Jefferson Railway in Jefferson. And we'll wrap up this week at the Memorial Day Celebration in downtown Granbury, May 24th through the 26th. For more events happening near you, make sure to check out the Hometown Happenings page on our website, hometownkids.tv. It's a big day for the Lantana River Cats because they're getting a surprise from a North Texas Chevy dealer that will help these boys this summer keep playing ball. It's a season of new beginnings for this select baseball team from North Texas. Uh, we're the River Cats, and we're new here, and we're just trying to develop our team so far. Uh, they're a first-year select team. Uh, most of these kids have uh, never played at this level before, uh, and they're learning, and they're developing really nicely. Um, you know, it hasn't really showed that much on the wins and losses, but the kids, you can tell every time they come out here, they're doing better and better. So, What does it take to play at this level that they're at now? Uh, really focus and dedication. And so far, the River Cats are on a mission to make their first year the best year. Why? Well, I, I hope we're trying to get on a winning streak. Yeah, we haven't really gotten on a winning streak yet. Only against the team. We're just going to try as, try and win as many tournaments as we can and play hard and have fun. Hope we do pretty good. 
I mean, like I said, we have our issues, but you know, we're trying to work them out. And the Lantana River Cats aren't the only ones rooting for them. A North Texas Chevy dealer jumped on board with the team to show their support. And you're rocking some Chevy gear right now. Tell me what you have on. I have the catcher's gear for our team, and it's by it has Chevy on it. What was it like to get this new gear from Chevy? It was it's really cool. We were really thankful. I mean, they've done a lot. I mean, they've given my catch, our catcher some new equipment, and they've been there to help us along the way. And today, the North Texas Chevy dealership dropped by with a check to help the team out. Well, it's $500 for the team. What did you think when you saw the check? I thought, I'm like, that's a lot of money. How do you think this is going to help you, especially since you're a new team? I mean, it'll help us maybe get some new gear. It'll help our confidence, maybe. It'll help us by helping us develop getting our team ready for the bigger games against the better teams. But Chevy's support stretches even farther than today's check presentation. What was it like when they came on board to sponsor your team? Uh, it was huge. Chevy is more than just about the donation. Um, they really are dedicated to this. I mean, Fred was out at our game on Saturday. He was there all day with the kids, sat through three games. Um, so like I said, it's more than just about the money. It's really about the dedication and watching these kids develop. Chevy is involved in all areas of our sports, especially baseball, apple pie in America, you know how that works. But anyway, we want to make sure that these kids understand the theory as well as being able to play and have fun in baseball. So with a little help from Chevrolet, these River Cats are ready to take this season by storm. We're just going to try, as, try and win as many tournaments as we can and play, play hard and have fun. You know, we don't really look at the scoreboard at the end of the day. If we've gone out and played a good game and, um, and they're growing, and most of all, they're having fun. That's the biggest part. Chevy supports and sponsors so many youth activities, and each week we're exploring a new one. So make sure to check us out every Saturday to see if we cruise into a hometown near you. And in the meantime, if you want more Chevy Hometown Kids, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And remember, hometowns are where today's beginners become tomorrow's experts. So if you know a kid in your community who deserves to be on the show, tell us about them on our website, hometownkids.tv. Next time, we're tearing up the track at a tractor pull, brushing up on our golf skills with some pros, learning a new method of basketball training, and discovering an extreme sport pushing the limits. We'll see you there.